what would Queen Anne have said? Somewhere around 1700, she was driving through Ascot from Windsor and thought it would be a good spot for a race course. Queen Anne may be dead, but she's dead right too. There's something about the place which makes studying form a positive pleasure. It's hardly Queen Anne's fault if it sometimes rains, but today it's dry with the sun in and out. Ideal weather for cramming on full sail, including the spinnaker. The royal drive along the course wasn't Queen Anne's idea. George IV started that 140 years ago, and it's been a firm Ascot tradition ever since. And Ascot's never been more royal than it is today. For Queen Elizabeth II makes no secret of the fact that racing's her favorite sport. This is the first Royal Ascot since the new Royal Enclosure stand was completed. It took 10 months to put up and cost one and a quarter million pounds. Where the old one accommodated only 3,500 people, this can take 8,000. Everyone's very pleased with the new stand, but there's one snag. The tarmac in the enclosure is only three weeks old and soft from the sun. And have you ever tried stiletto heels on soft tarmac? Never mind, says the architect. Come back next year. It'll be hard by then. In the paddock, 17 two-year-old fillies are parading for the Queen Mary Stakes. There's Saint Trope, number two, and Barra, 21. Pierre Joyal, seven. All of Fire, number nine. Pindana, 11. Brassier, number 16, Vincent O'Brien's entry. And here come the jockeys. Wonder how they feel about Ascot, the only meeting where the crowd are more brilliantly dressed than the riders. Val Fagader mounts bugle call number five. There's the favorite, Windsor, Rebel Starkey, up. Song at 5 to 2 and Brassier at 7 to 2 are expected to make the running. Brassier's jockey is Jack Pertell. Saint Trope giving Jimmy Lindley a spot of trouble. And they're off. Final furlong, and it's the favorite Windsong being pressed hard by Brassier. Windsong can't hold her off, and now the Irish Phillies are ahead and pulling away. An Irish victory by three lengths. Nice riding by Jack Pertell. Brassier is Vincent O'Brien's first two-year-old runner and winner at Royal Ascot, and he predicts quite a future for her. There's no hurry about Royal Ascot. 30 to 40 minutes between races, which is a good civilized tempo. And if anyone thinks half the crowd at Ascot haven't a thought for horses, here's a cowboy hat to prove him wrong. Next on the card, the Royal Hunt Cup for three-year-olds and upwards. The Duke of Norfolk escorts the Queen to the paddock to inspect the runners. Thirty runners in this one-mile handicap. Ross Rock, number 10. Connemara Kid, 31. Emerald Cross, 27. Yellow Sovereign, 12. Defendant, 25. Max Cabin, 24. A much more open race than the Queen Mary Stakes. No odds shorter than 100 to 9 as the time draws near. Mickey Greening mounts Gallert, number 30. Leading apprentice, Paul Cook, is to ride number 21, Weeper's Boy. Frankie Durr's mount is water skier number 13. Neither the Queen nor the Queen Mother has any horses running today, but they're enjoying it nonetheless for that.
Lester Piggott riding St Gulliver. He's the favourite, but still at only 100 to 9. Clearly, this race is anybody's guess. Equally clearly, there are plenty of people guessing. Nearest the rails, Red Slipper, number one, Bill Williamson. Doug Smith rides El Yucas, number nine, wearing blinkers. The flag's up and a clean start, though some are slow away, including El Yucas. Entering the last furlong, Zolukas is there, up with the leaders. Galert's ahead, but Zolukas is chasing him. Has Doug Smith left the challenge too late? Zolukas is going to make it, and he has by a head. Zolukas' owner, Major McCalmont, has a flair for Royal Ascot. His first win here was in 1909.